Hi, so we're going to create four virtual machines in two fold domains using the availability set options on Azure portal. So before we set up the virtual machines, we need to understand how to achieve high availability on the Azure cloud. And we can see there are um, various ways we can improve high availability and redundancy. The first way is through the use of availability zones, which we used uh, in our previous videos. And we saw that it helped in creating high availability and redundancy. So we can also see uh, availability sets as another option which we are going to use. And the fourth domains and update domains. And the last is the VMSS, which is the virtual machine skill sets. So availability zones are physical separate data centers within an Azure region with independent power, network and cooling. So we have availability sets, which are logical groupings of two or more virtual machines within a data center. Then we have four domains, which involves the use of different racks of servers to prevent application outage due to unplanned maintenance, power, or hardware failure. And we also have the update domains, uh, which involves the use of different racks of servers to prevent application outage due to planned upgrade software and hardware changes. So the basic difference is that um, the four domains are for unplanned and uh, maintenance and the update dom domains are for the planned uh, upgrades. Um, finally, we have the virtual machine skill sets, uh, which creates and manages a group of identical load balance VMs. But in this video, we're not going to um, talk about this. We'll do that in the next video. So we're back on our lab on the packet tracer and I've been able to um, create this to explain exactly what those uh, terms we listed mean. And we can see that we have the regions, Azure regions, and in this case, uh, West Europe. Regions are des designations where um, you have the Azure cloud services. And within the region, we have the availability zone, in this case, availability zone one, uh, which also contains the data center. Um, and within the data center, we have uh, racks of servers. And in this case, we have rack one and rack two. And we can see that the four domains and update domains actually uh, fall within the racks. So um, if there is power outage on uh, one of the racks, then the rack two, um, like if rack one is out, then rack two would uh, keep um, running. So this is basically what it means. And we can see that all this in availability zone one, but in our previous diagram, we had availability zone one and availability uh, zone two within um, the region. So. So we can decide to set up the availability sets um, locally, which is uh, what we are doing now, we're going to do now, or we can set it within the availability zones, which is what we're going to do in the next video using the virtual machine um, skill sets. So let's set up these virtual machines and let's place them in uh, the different fault uh, domain. So we're back on our Azure portal and we now need to create the virtual machines. So we'll go to virtual machines and we'll create, click create virtual machine and shows us our subscription resource group. We would create a new one. So click create and the resource group we'll have is resource group lab 04. Okay, and the virtual machine name, we'll just call it VM Lab 0401. So that will be our first virtual machine. And the region is fine, East USA. We can also choose uh, West Europe. That's fine. 
availability options so we'll click on the availability set and now we need to create the availability set so we'll create new and we'll call this availability set o4 and for domains we need two and the update domains like we can see we have two four domains and two update domains so we'll choose two and we'll change this to two and that's fine click ok and we can see availability set has been created image is fine size b1s is fine we'll choose password and we'll use azure admin and the password we'll put the password in in public uh, inbound ports is fine next next and we can see the network interface so our virtual network we're going to call it so vnet lab 04 and we'll maintain this and the default is fine okay and our public ip we'll just call this peep that's public ip and that's fine okay next next and we'll just put the cost center and we'll call it lab 04 and the name vm 04 01 and everything is fine create the vm so we'll give it some time to fully deploy the vm our deployment is complete so we'll click go to resource and now we are on the virtual machine uh, lab 04 that's 01 so we'll scroll down to where we have availability and scaling and we can see that this virtual machine is in the false domain 0 and update domain 0 and if we come back to our diagram we can see uh, our first virtual machine false domain 0 update, uh, update domain 0 so it's been placed there um, automatically and if we click on the our availability sets we can see it's currently running with the fault domain and update domain and we can see that we have two fault domains that have been created update domains two and we only have one virtual machine in uh, the fault domain zero and update domain zero so let's quickly create the other virtual machines so we'll go down to virtual machines and we'll create a new one virtual machine do exactly the same thing choose the resource group lab 04 the virtual machine name vm lab 04 02 this time uh, western europe fine we have the availability sets which we already created which you choose and the uh, password we we'll use the username password and the virtual lab which is what we use that's fine so the same thing cost center lab 04 and the name we'll call it lab 0402 and review and create create and uh, virtual machine has been created we go to resource and we can see it's running so we'll go down to where we have availability and scaling and we can see it placed our virtual machine 2 in full domain 1 and update domain 1 so I've been able to adjust the diagram a bit to show that we have uh, one avail availability set which we created availability set lab 04 and we can see the four virtual machines in this av availability set and I'm just going to correct uh, just one more thing here 
because we can see that the VM02 falls in the default domain 1 and update domain 1. So it's meant to be uh, VM01 in uh, fault domain 0, update domain 0, and, uh, and, and VM02 in uh, fault domain 1, update domain 1. So let me uh, quickly do that now. So I've made the change and now we can see how our configuration should look like. So let's go back and uh, create the VM03, which should fall in the fault domain 0 and uh, that of the VM042. So we'll go back and we can click availability sets and we'll see our two virtual machines which are in uh, the respective fault domains and update domain. So let's go back to virtual machines, create another one and the same thing our resource group is lab 04 and the virtual machine name is VM03 this time find West Europe, then availability option, availability set, and we'll choose the set which was created. Um, the image is fine. Um, password, and let's put it that in. So we'll just put in the cost center, lab 04, and the name, which is going to be 03 and review and create and we can create and once it's completed we will click on go to resource we can see the virtual machine we've created and we'll come down to availability and scaling and we can see that it's put this in fault domain 0 and update domain 1 so if we click on the full list we can see that we have vm03 in fault domain 0 and update domain 1. So let's uh, create VM04. Cost center, lab 04, the name, this time let's call it 04, and review and create. And we can create. And now our virtual machine has been de deployed, so let's click on go to resource. And if we go down to availability and scaling, we can see. The full domain this time is 1 and update domain is 0. So let's click on availability set. And now we can see that VM1 and, and fold domain 0 and VM3 in uh, fold domain 0. And if we look at the diagram, we can see that VM1 and VM3 are in fold domain 0. And we have that um, VM2 and vm4 are in fold domain 1 so let's go back to the diagram and we can see vm2 and vm4 are in fold domain 1 so it means that there is going to be redundancy and high availability such that, that even if this rack 1 should shut down we still have uh, rack 2 and rack 4 that will still be functioning and the other way around so we have successfully been able to create um, four virtual machines and split them within uh, two um, four domains and update domains